James one is James, the wine guy before us, is from the Beehive State. It's called Beehive Barrel Reserve Gin. Stay tuned. So what we have before us is uh, Beehive Distilling. This is their Barrel Reserve Gin. Now it's uh, fine spirit distilled in Utah, Salt Lake City, Utah to be precise. 42.5% ABV. And uh, this is completed with wood, fire, and patience. And I'm sure that's uh, you know talking about the experience of creating this particular gin. So this is barrel number one. So this is the first time they produce this. So this is not the first oak experience uh, gin. I think you're gonna see many more of these in the marketplace. I think uh, it's not necessarily to uh, compete against whiskey because whiskey's whiskey and there's a great fan base for whiskey. So when I was in Chicago, I went to a wonderful restaurant called Vincent. This is probably six, seven years ago. Vincent is a modern Dutch restaurant and they really focus in on their gins. You know, it's just to, to enjoy gin on its own. And uh, that's where I thought, uh-huh, I don't have to mix gin with things. I can enjoy it as a sipping beverage. So um, I think this is a really remarkable, beautiful gin. I think the, the I don't know the exact uh, imparting of oak on here, but it must be significant enough to get that beautiful coloration. It could be two months, it could be six months. I'm not really certain, it depends on the toasting profile. And I believe all the barrels are toasted in house. Uh, it's a video I saw online. So I'll attach that video down below as well if you're interested in seeing that video. So this has to have juniper, otherwise it could not be called gin. So it's very juniper centric, but in a very uh, you know appreciable way. Just a few years ago, you go to your favorite uh, you know spirits merchant, and what would you find in, in the gin section? Maybe two or three producers, maybe four or five if you were lucky. Uh, they were all London Dry, so it's a very specific pointed uh, juniper ask juniper centric, which is fine. Uh, but ultimately, I think what we're getting from you know different gins around the world is that experience in the region is coming into play and uh, giving some botanicals from the region. This is the scent characterization, flavor profile, and the point score. So unless I'm getting notes of mountain forest, sweet flowers, cinnamon, cardamom, allspice, clove, and leather-bound library. Next is the flavor characterization, then the point score. Beautiful notes on this gin include definitive juniper focus, golden citrus, dry fig, caramel toast, truffled honey, pepper, and sarsaparilla. It gives a 9.4 out of a 10.0 scale. Think of this as 94 points out of 100 points. And, um, you know, when you think of Salt Lake City, Utah, or Utah in general, there is uh, there are breweries, there are a few wineries, and uh, this distillery. And I think it's really probably, you know, that experience coming from around the country and tasting what is coming from the region. So I don't know the botanical signature on this, and I want to try their Jack Rabbit Gin because that is their non-oaked gin. Uh, but for me, I thought, oh, this is hard to find, and I guess I'd have to go, you know, find it here in the Bay Area or go to uh, Salt Lake City, which I'd love to visit at some point. You have a tradition. Tradition beginning, say, in 1989 with Wasatch Brewing. So you do have uh, this experience in Utah, which I think a lot of people think is absent. It is clearly not. So a beautiful gin uh, to really get that point of difference gin uh, in terms of so unique and different, but yet very appreciable. So I'll put more information down below on the producer. List your questions and comments there as well. If you want to, you can put it on uh, the many social medias that I'm on, such as Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Pinterest, LinkedIn, as well as Instagram and WordPress. Thank you so much for watching today. Stay tuned for more. Salud.